Woman accused of killing another woman her boyfriend had a brief relationship with. Details in today's 9 at 9 plus. It's Mental Health Awareness Month and a local organization is having a fundraiser here at Raisin Cane's to support mental health programs in our community. Coming up, how you can get involved and help someone. And taking a look outside with live cam. Looks a little gloomy, but we're happy about the break in temperatures. We're starting at 70 degrees. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It's Monday, May 23rd, and weather is one of our main headlines this morning. That's right. We're getting a break from the heat that we had last week and expecting rain now. That's right. Chance of storms remains in our forecast for the foreseeable future. Here's Justin Horn with more. Hey, good morning, guys. Yes, rain chances pick up, especially tonight. We're expecting storms to move into the area, some of which could be strong to severe, but we're hoping it also brings some good rainfall. Fall. Here's a look at what we think rain chances look like. A 40% chance mainly late this afternoon and this evening. And then as we get into tonight, a 60% chance of rainfall, probably our best shot. 30% chance during the day on Tuesday. Then we'll have another good chance Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. So some opportunity here to pick up some much needed rainfall because I know not everyone got rain on Saturday. Forecast high 87 and again we have that chance for some storms a little bit later today. At the moment things are quiet. I uh, want to show you the severe weather threats, what we can expect with some of these storms once they develop this evening. Wind gusts are going to be the biggest threat, I think, but hail and flooding will be there. Flooding is going to be localized. Pockets of heavy rain could cause some uh, minor street, street flooding. And then with the, the hail, some a large hail and a few storms will be possible. The tornado threat is low. Pollen count is in, as you might imagine, because we've had some of the rain as of late. Molds have jumped up 1,900 during the high category today. Grass is low at 40. Here's our case at 12 hour forecast. 79 degrees by noontime. I do think we start to see a few peaks of sun and then clouds fill back in a little bit later today. We start to add in those rain chances around 2 or 3 o'clock, but they pick up by the evening hours. 30% chance at 5 o'clock, but a 40% chance at 6 o'clock. And by 8, 9 o'clock, we're talking 60% chance of rain. Could be loud tonight, too, with some of these storms. We're going to diagnose it a little bit more coming up here in just a few minutes and talk about some of those other chances for rain that we have in the forecast here in just a couple minutes, guys. All right, that's planned. Thank you, Justin. And let's look at today's 9 at 9. A 38-year-old man is facing several charges after being arrested for allegedly impersonating a San Antonio police officer and burglarizing a home. The incident happened Friday and Salvatore Alfieri was finally arrested on Sunday. Officials say he could be facing additional charges related to drugs. A search is underway for a 35-year-old woman from Austin who is accused of killing a professional cyclist who once dated her boyfriend. The U.S. Marshals Lone Star Fugitive Task Force is looking for Caitlin Armstrong. Authorities say she could be driving a black Jeep Cherokee. Anyone with any information about where she could be, you are asked to call 1-800-336-0102. The first batch of imported baby formula is now in the U.S. It's the first of several planes expected to arrive in the coming days and weeks, but the shortage is severe and getting worse. The company behind the shortage says they're hoping to restart production in June, but wouldn't have any products out until July. At least four infants in South Carolina were recently hospitalized as a result of the infant formula shortage. Three of them were admitted when their parents were forced to use alternative brands and their babies couldn't tolerate the switch. The fourth infant hospitalized was made sick by mineral imbalances from a formula that a parent tried to mix on their own. Clinical dietitians warn parents not to try to dilute formula or attempt to make their own. President Biden announcing his Indo-Pacific economic framework this morning. He says it consists of 13 partner countries. The plan would increase trade, making it easier to get goods from overseas, improve supply chains and lower prices. Congress would need to ratify the president's plan before it becomes official. In his second leg of his first trip to Asia as president, President Biden saying the U.S. would intervene with military if China were to invade Taiwan. The U.S. traditionally has avoided making such an explicit security guarantee to Taiwan, but the message the president wanted to send was that the U.S. is dedicated to uniting its friends and allies in that region. 
Title 42 has been ordered to stay in place, at least for now. On Friday, a federal judge blocked the Trump-era immigration policy from ending. The policy is set to expire today, but a judge found the Biden administration did not follow the correct procedures to end the policy. Stock futures overnight pointing to a higher open on Wall Street after trading closed Friday. Just outside a bear market, the S&P finishing last week nearly 19 percent off its all-time high. The bear market is 20 percent below its high. A recall of peanut butter over worries about salmonella. The makers of Jif recalling several sizes of both its creamy and crunchy peanut butter after possible salmonella contamination that was traced back to a manufacturing plant in the state of Kentucky. And that's today's nine at nine. Checking Transguide right now. We have slowdowns in the normal spots now, but the morning commute has come to a close. At last check, we were not seeing any major incidents around town. You're looking live right now at 410 at Broadway. In your other morning headlines, Trevor Reed speaks out in a one-on-one -on -one interview at a daring cliff rescue that ends in the best way possible. Our first, a huge report involving the Southern Baptist Convention. Max Massey joins us live in the studio this morning with our morning headlines. Good morning, Max. Good morning, guys. We got a lot to talk about. We are starting with that new report on a sexual abuse allegation. So an alleged cover-up by leaders of the Southern Baptist Convention. This morning, new revelations accusing the Southern Baptist Convention of covering up sexual abuse for years. A 288-page independent report accusing the Southern and denigrating survivors of clergy sexual abuse for nearly two decades. Hannah Kate Williams suing her a former pastor and the Southern Baptist Convention, among others, for physical and sexual abuse when she was only eight years old. Now, allegations first surfacing in 2019, and this followed a report from the Houston Chronicle and the Express News. It documented hundreds of alleged cases in Southern Baptist churches, including several in which the alleged abusers remained in the ministry. SBC President Ed Litton, he responded to the allegations just yesterday. He said he is, quote, grieved to my core for the victims, and he said, quote, I pray Southern Baptist will begin preparing today to take deliberate actions to address these failures, end quote. All right, so the latest in the saga of Trevor Reed, a former Marine from Texas. Remember, he was detained in Russia for more than two years. And also remember, we told you live, he was freed in a prison swap. So now he's talking about his ordeal. Yesterday, sitting down with Jake Tapper, Trevor Reed addressed the controversial idea of prison swaps. Now, Trevor Reed said that countries like North Korea, Russia, obviously China, Syria, Iran, Venezuela, countries like that, no matter what, are going to take Americans hostage. And even if they don't receive some type of exchange for those prisoners, they will do that anyway, just out of pure malice, just to show the United States that we took your citizens. And they're going to continue to do that as long as American citizens travel there. So. That whole thing about, well, this is going to incentivize, you know, foreign governments to take us hostage. Those types of governments need no incentive to take Americans hostage. They're always going to do that. And speaking of prisoners overseas, the U.S. government now working on getting other Americans released from Russian prisons. So that includes right, see, right here, WNBA star Brittany Griner. She's been in Russian custody for more than 75 days. Remember, she was arrested after the customs inspection of a hand luggage confirmed the presence of vapes with specially, or specifically smelling liquid. An expert determined that that liquid was cannabis oil, also known as hash oil, which is a narcotic substance. All right, so now to the good news of the morning. New details being released after Thursday's spectacular aerial rescue. A man was stuck on a cliff over the Pacific Ocean and a California Highway Patrol helicopter crew. They put themselves at risk. They battled high winds and they saved the day. So a jaw dropping moment. A CHP chopper crew rescued the stranded man. He was clinging to dear life on this cliff, but reaching wasn't easy. One of the officers saying they had to do so in a short search. They weren't sure where he actually was on the cliff. No one could find him at first. The man finally located midway down the steep cliff. Now, as you can see right here, clearly not an easy feat to get him. He was in a very, what they're calling, precarious spot, about 500 feet off the water. It's about a 900-foot cliff. So the flight crew got ready to rescue the man. He had fallen from the top, but weather conditions really working against this mission. He, he actually grabbed onto me, which uh, is a very dangerous thing he did. 
because um, if I were to have swung um, away from him, he could have potentially fallen off the cliffs. I told him to kind of stay, stay put on the cliff, and then and he kind of was able to get himself into the harness and help me out. Miraculously, he only had uh, some scrapes and, and bruises, but that's about it. All right, so he was taken to the hospital as just a precaution, but not before thanking the Napa-based flight CHP flight crew for their help. And guys, one of the questions that we're still asking, how did he fall from the top? Yeah. And then land, because uh, just doing, you know, napping math, 900-foot cliff, he was about 500 feet there. Mm -hmm. So it means he fell about 400 feet, and he was seemingly okay. Yeah, no kidding. And hard, hard to spot, I mean, yes. to that entire uh, terrain right there. Oh. I mean, he's a very, very lucky guy. But yes. I'm very lucky to say the least. I know, look I, at that video. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And thank, thank goodness for the crew members. And yes. thank goodness that they were safe as well. That's not easy. Look at that right there, Max. I'm oh. not much of a foothold left, is there, at all. Yes. I mean. <gasps> uh, I don't oof. even know how he was hanging in there that long. Mm. But Mark, you said it helped. best, ended the best way possible. Yes, yes sir. Thank did. you, Max. Yes. Thank you. Right now, 908, about 70 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. It is graduation season, and we are kicking off our Great Grads series. Later in the show, we're going to introduce you to a woman who refused to give up on her dream of getting her degree. Plus, it is Mental Health Awareness Month, and a local organization is holding a fundraiser to support mental health programs in San Antonio. Coming up after the break, Tiffany Huertas will explain how you can get involved and help someone who is struggling. And taking a look outside with a live cam, kind of looks like it's going to rain soon. Well, we are expecting that. Uh, we're going to be checking in to Justin to, to see when and where exactly. We'll be right back. Just about 913, millions of Americans face the reality of living with a mental illness. And during May, organizations like the Center for Healthcare Services joins the national movement to raise awareness about mental health. For Mental Health Awareness Month, the Center for Healthcare Services is having a fundraiser to help fight the stigma around mental health. Tiffany Huetas joins us live from the fundraiser with more. Good morning, Tiffany. Well, first of all, how will today's fundraisers help locals? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Right now we're at Raising Cane's and the food purchase here would go to support locals here in our community and all the programs that this center does provide. And joining us right now, we have the CEO, Jantling Jamison. Good morning. Can you talk to us about what is happening here this morning? Well, we're Raising Cane with Raising Cane's this morning. We're raising money to support the programs at the Center for Healthcare Services. We have been in this community for a very long time, 56 years, providing treatment for mental health issues and substance use treatment. And so we're very happy to be in this partnership with Raising Canes today. How has it all changed during the pandemic? Is there a greater need right now for the services? Sure, we're finding that um, individuals are suffering more with depression and anxiety. It has really impacted our youth. The isolation of being away from their friends for two years and not being engaged with their friends at school has really impacted our youth in San Antonio. So we're seeing an uptick across the community. And there's free webinars this month as well that the center's providing? Sure, there's uh, webinars explaining the aspects of the various disorders on our website with CHCS, but more importantly, our, our organization is out in the community training individuals around mental health first aid. We're sharing the aspects of all the diseases and uh, teaching people the accurate vocabulary to use and really to overcome the stigma associated with seeking treatment and a way to help our families, help loved ones seek treatment and get, help, to get the help that they need. The big message today is that you're not alone. Absolutely, you're not alone and there's nothing wrong with seeking treatment. Just like an individual seeks treatment for their physical health, um, we're encouraging you to seek treatment for your mental health because after all, our heads are attached to our bodies. And what type of programs um, do you all offer to um, children and adults in Bear County? Primarily, we provide outpatient services for children and adults across Bear County, um, but we can address mental health disorders, substance use treatment, as well as behavioral issues. And we also serve the IDD population. And it's all about working with other organizations as well. You all work with different organizations and the city as well? Absolutely. We have partnerships and stakeholders throughout this community. They include the city of San Antonio, Bear County, and many of the nonprofits that also provide counseling services. They, see, they receive referrals from CHCS and vice versa. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're going to have a little bit more coming up in the noon show, and we're going to hear about the services that they provide. Back to you guys in the studio. We look forward to it. Thank you, Tiffany.
Well, if you're just now tuning in at 916, Justin is here with an update on our potential for some showers and storms around here. And the table's been set, has it not? I think so. I mean, I think we're set up for, for some good rain tonight. We missed out a little bit on Saturday. I mm -hmm. think this is a little better chance. The computer models coming in are, are still... Uh, looking at uh, some pretty heavy storms, at least in spots tonight. So let's first start with the setup. What is happening here? We've got an area of low pressure or at least a little disturbance in the atmosphere off to our west. And this is going to work its way into Texas later today. But we're already starting to see some lift here in the Big Bend across parts of Mexico. And this is what will be headed our way a little bit later this afternoon. And uh, as especially as we get into this evening, the Storm Prediction Center has outlined this area here for scattered severe storms. So Lubbock, Midland, Odessa, back down towards San Angelo and San Antonio. Most of our viewing area is included in this area and we think hail gusty winds are going to be the main threats with any storms that develop but the risk for severe weather is there and as we look at the computer models in the forecast here well, let's first start with uh, this afternoon we're expecting uh, about a well 40 percent chance of rain it looks like the uh, graphics not working for me here to show you there, oh, it all happened at once. Let me see if we can go through that again and see if we can uh, get a little better look because I want you to see what we're thinking as far as the showers and storms go. Let's see if it'll work for us this time. Uh, maybe not. I'm not sure why that's not working, but uh, we are expected uh, to see these showers and storms come through and you see it really fast there. Uh, the storms will be through here about midnight tonight, we think, but a 60% chance of rain. We're expecting to see more showers and storms as we get into tomorrow and then again Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. Uh, there you go. This is Wednesday morning showing some of that heavier rain starting to come in with uh, again that 60% chance for rain and even lingering over into Wednesday morning. So the storm threats, wind gusts are going to be our highest threat. Hail is in the moderate category. So I do think the possibility for hail is especially initially as these storms develop out west this evening. And then uh, I think flooding is a moderate threat too with some of the heavier pockets of rain. We could pick up some some quick amounts and that could lead to some uh, minor street flooding. The tornado threat, thankfully, is low. And as we look at the rainfall potential, this is through Thursday morning. We're talking about one to three inches here on average. Some places could see a little bit more, some places a little bit less. But I think that's probably the average. And those places that do see more is where we could see some of that flooding. Right now, we've got cloudy skies, 70 degrees at the airport. East northeasterly winds at about nine miles per hour. And you see all the cloud cover. It's still in place, but some breaks down to the south and south and east. And I do think we'll get some breaks here over the next couple of hours and uh, see a little bit of sun, enough to push temperatures into the 80s. Right now, though, 68 Holota, 70 at the airport, 68 Randolph. Feels pretty nice outside after what was a fairly cool day yesterday, at least comparatively speaking, to what we've seen most of May. As far as dew points go, we'll see the dew points stay in the 60s and probably come up just a little bit this afternoon before those storms come in. So here's our case at 12 hour forecast, 79 noon time. And then by say three o'clock, we'll get in a 20% chance of rain, 30% chance by 4 p.m., 30% chance by 5 p.m. And then we're looking at a 60% chance of rain by 8 p.m. and into the overnight hours. That 60% stays with us with, uh, again, the threat for some heavy rain in spots. Here's the extended forecast. We'll go 86 tomorrow, then a 60% chance of rain again Tuesday night into Wednesday, as we showed you. There's more opportunity there for some heavy rain. 79 on Wednesday with some lingering showers and storms, and then it clears out after that. 87 Thursday, 91 Friday, and then as we head into Memorial Day weekend, it will be hot and probably dry, very quiet. It's the next couple of days that we really have to watch, and we'll be here for you throughout the day to keep you posted on what happens and how this evolves in a case that weather app. Yeah, we'll be sending out alerts through there as well. All right, we'll be watching closely. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. 920, about 70 degrees. And when we come back, Courtney Freeman will share the story of a local couple and a delivery nurse that now share a very special bond. 923, a life-changing full circle experience with a patient led a labor and delivery nurse to write all about it for National Nurses Week this month in Methodist Health System magazine. Courtney Freeman saw the article and had to meet them. Their story and their connection goes to show how important a nurse can be in a patient's life and how, in this case, strangers became family. Parenting. It's the most rewarding, <laughs> exhausting um, job there is. Devin and Shelton Aguilar Ma came to meet us with their adorable one-year-old son, Knox, in tow. Hey, how did the camera? 
but he's not the only child in their family. We got pregnant on the first try with an IUI, um, and so we were over the moon ecstatic. Around 18 weeks, a scan showed Devin had no amniotic fluid, and by 19 weeks, she had an infection. They had to deliver a baby they knew had not survived. This is the first time that I had to interact with somebody who had lost a baby. It was just such a pivotal moment for me as a nurse. Kayleen Cortez was Devin and Shelton's labor and delivery nurse at Methodist Hospital in May of 2020. And with the pandemic prohibiting family to visit, she became their support system. I walked in and she had like a huge Harry Potter blanket. And I just remember like just being so relieved that I was like, okay, we at least like can talk about something. What do you say to somebody who just like lost this baby that they wanted so badly? Harry Potter is my jam. And so I showed her my little Deathly Hollows tattoo. Kayleen then helped deliver their baby girl. Our daughter's name is Polly. I just wanted it to do something special for them because we had made this connection. And so I just remember that quote from Harry Potter. Kayleen printed out the quote, Happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. I did handprints and footprints on there for them. And to me, it was just something that was just a small gesture. But to Devin and Shelton, it was so much more. That's actually how we announced. I guess the birth of her um, was taking a picture of that. She has it like framed on her mantle that they like show it to everybody. That and my picture and they tell everybody about me. Fast forward 10 months, Devin was pregnant with Knox and was having a preterm labor scare at 30 weeks. We walked in, I was like, you know, is, is there a nurse that works here named Kayleen? She's like, yeah. I was like, is she working by chance today? She's like, oh yeah. All of a sudden, a door like bursts open, I swear. <laughs> and Kayleen's like, oh my gosh, and just comes and we just start crying together. Kayleen helped deliver Knox, who was healthy, but had to be rushed to the NICU for precaution. I'm worried leaving her, yeah. following him, like, but I knew she had Kayleen to watch over her. Like, I've never... Um, expected to have that kind of connection in nursing. Now, reunions like this are common. Hi. Hi. A full circle experience showing the true power of nursing and the ripple effect of making genuine human connections. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. This morning when we ran that story, we were all kind of glued to the monitor yeah. and uh, I saw a few smiles and a few tears. Yeah, yeah, definitely a special connection there. Nice story. Right now, 926, about 71 degrees. There is more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including our feature story of a recent college graduate who achieved her goal of getting her degree despite the obstacles in her way. And the latest Defenders investigation getting a lot of attention online when we come back. We'll take a look at Tim Gerber's story about some people's mobile home dreams ruined by a local business. And taking a look outside with live cam. Starting in the 70s right now, uh, not too bad. I really like the break in temperatures. What a nice surprise this morning. Well, yesterday felt amazing. That front uh, made a big difference in temperatures. We'll take that. Now we need some rain. Uh, I do think we have a pretty good shot at some rain tonight. I want to show you the forecast models again because they weren't working earlier, but here you go. As we get into, say, 7 o'clock tonight, we'll start to see those storms developing out west. About a 40% chance of rain. Some of these could be severe. Del Rio to Rock Springs, that's an area we've got to watch during this time frame. Then those storms march east and by the overnight hours, 11 o'clock, midnight, those storms are coming into San Antonio and they're likely producing some pretty heavy rain as they do. Still could be strong to severe as well. All stuff we'll watch. By tomorrow morning, a lot of that is pushing east. We get a break in the action and then a few isolated pop up showers or storms Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening. Then we get another line of showers and storms, some heavy rain potentially. Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, 60% chance of rain during that time frame, even going into uh, the Wednesday morning commute. Uh, we could see some pretty heavy rain. So there is some chances there. There are some chances there to get some pretty decent rain. As far as the severe weather threat, wind gusts are going to be the highest threat we have, but hail and flooding will be there too. The tornado threat is low. Uh, KSAT 12 hour forecast, 79 noontime. We'll be up around 87 by 4 o'clock. 30% chance of rain at that point, but we bring it up to a 50 to even 60% chance of rain by 8, 9 o'clock. And temperatures will be in the 70s at that point. And we'll be watching those storms gather as they work their way east towards San Antonio tonight. Much more on all of this coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. The, the latest coronavirus news, Pfizer says it's three child size doses of its COVID vaccine showed a strong immune response in kids ages six months to five years old. But this is just preliminary data and has not yet been published or peer reviewed.
An FDA committee has tentative meetings set for June to discuss emergency use authorizations updates that could make young kids eligible for Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Children under five are the only age group not yet eligible for COVID vaccinations. Now, Pfizer's trial included nearly 1,700 kids who got a third dose during the Omicron surge. They say antibody levels tested a month after the third dose showed the vaccine produced a similar immune response as two full doses in 16 to 25 year olds. They also said three child sized doses for this youngest age group were quote unquote well tolerated and no new safety signals were identified. Well, our latest defenders investigation getting a lot of attention online. Selling a home to live in an old school bus may sound like a strange thing to do, but it's a growing trend as couples and families search for more freedom by living on the road. Now, converting these old buses into mobile homes is becoming a big business. And over the past five months, the defenders have found custom, customer after customer who say they hired a local bus conversion business who they claim took them for a ride both emotionally and financially. Tim Gerber has this defender's investigation. We gave him $75,000 total. It was going to be a $100,000 bill. Jim and Trudy Krupaki hired Lone Star Schoolie Conversions to make this bus their home on the road. But their dreams soon took a wrong turn. So yeah. this, this has left you all financially wrecked. Yeah, it, it has. It has completely changed the trajectory of the, of what we had built on for years to for ourselves. They say business owner Ben Potts told them he'd have their bus finished in six to eight weeks. But when the couple came to pick their new home up in August last year, it wasn't done. They then found themselves living out of hotels as the weeks turned into months. I mean, it was like being in a toxic relationship with no end. Finally, in November, Potts told them the bus was finished, but we knew it was a mess. Even though Ben was standing right in front of us telling us our bus was worth $100,000. I mean, if you look at this, it looks like a, a junior high project. Ross Taylor is a schoolie expert. He was shocked by the condition of the Krupaki's bus. The tile is just attached directly to plywood. It'll pop loose here pretty soon. He found all kinds of problems. This wasn't attached to anything, so if they used the toilet, the urine would have run out on the floor. His biggest concern, the number of electrical hazards he discovered, some of them potentially deadly. There are things done in here that a first week apprentice electrician wouldn't do. Up here, there's a 30 amp circuit breaker with 12 gauge wire and 12 gauge wire is only rated to handle up to a 20 amp circuit breaker. So that's a, a fire hazard. And then there was this. If you do an internet search for suicide cable or Widowmaker cord, you'll find this. So this plugs into the generator and this plugs in here. When this is plugged into the generator, these are live. And that's why it's called a, a suicide cable. You touch that, you're... Yeah, yeah, you can't buy these because they're not safe. I mean, they're super dangerous. The defenders have identified more than 20 customers who say they didn't get what they paid for. A rainstorm hit on the way home and we found out that the bus was completely completely leaking and every single weld they did pretty much water was pouring through the bus. He still owes me 27,000. Um, I don't have a bus. We got there and nothing had been done. Our bus had not been moved, not been touched. Zach and Taryn Marks got fed up dealing with all the delays and pulled their bus before it was finished. But not before they say Ben Potts offered to make things right by adding more solar panels with extra materials he had. This is what his extra solar laying around was. All different wires, different ages, not the gauge they're supposed to be for that circuit running through them. They say they're now out $15,000 and will need to pay even more to fix the damage Lone Star Schoolie caused. So right now you're at Lone Star Schoolie headquarters. Okay. And here is where all the magic comes through. Ben Potts invited me to his warehouse to see how he operates. So what, what happens is we actually cut the entire bus front to back and we raise it anywhere from about 10 to 22 inches. But when we questioned him about his many angry customers, the answers didn't come easily. Uh, what, so what's the, I'm sorry, I, I'm, uh, you, one more time. The buses that we've seen have been described as death traps, fire hazards, accidents waiting to happen. If there was anything like that, we'd be on it 
and we will we love to fix that. He blamed most of the problems on a former contractor. And I started contracting out a couple of builds because we started getting very busy. And we noticed that every single one that he touched are the ones that are upset. He also blamed his customers, saying they're out to get him. So you feel that these people are damaging your business? They've, they've destroyed my company. Potts did eventually take some responsibility, admitting he took on more customers than he could handle, which resulted in the subpar work. He says he will now pay to have the buses fixed or give customers full refunds. We're not gonna let anybody go without at least being refunded back or helped or it's spoken to directly. But this customer says it's all lip service. My bus was delivered mid-December and we're now in May and it's been the back and forth. Oh, we're going to fix it. Oh, we're going to do this. Oh, we contacted this person to fix it. Air Force veteran Lauren Doherty was horrified when Lone Star Schooly delivered her bus. So there's like no windshield were, whatsoever. No, this it's completely cracked. Was the guy driving it like that? Yeah, and it fell in on him. Also, the floors were rotted out. This is the old bus floor. That's the mold and rust. On top of it, when Doherty checked the title, she says she learned the bus had been flooded, something she says Potts never disclosed to her. And even worse... He also jumped the title, so it was never transferred into his name. He doesn't... So I have to get a bonded title. She also says she was contacted by another Lone Star Schooly customer who paid for a bus they never received. That customer had the exact same title as Doherty. And so they went that whole time not knowing that their bus was sold out from under them. So we asked and Potts about it. That uh, particular client I can't talk about um, due to litigation and due to actual police reports. But he says he's paying that customer back. So the bus refund was given and then we're actually still on a, a plan with them refunding the rest of the build as well too. So you're paying them back as, as you speak? Yes okay. sir. In no way would we, that's stealing. I filled out the small, yeah. Doherty came to San Antonio two weeks ago and filed a lawsuit in small claims court. You know, if I can do something about it to make sure that somebody else isn't hurt, whether or not I get my money back is is minuscule in the, in the larger scheme of things. She was joined by Joe Baker, an Army veteran who's suing Potts for taking $15,000 but not doing any work on his veteran outreach bus. He has a court date on June 7th. This is criminal. He is taking people's money and not providing a service and or just blatantly just ripping people off so we got some water coming through here we got some cooking that can take place actually Potts has not been charged with any crime despite all the troubles he's facing Potts is still converting buses and he says doing it even better and he's now hoping to win back customers. We're going to get their money back to him. We're going to take care of them. We're not going to leave nobody high and dry. But his former customers say they don't believe a thing he says. What I would love for him is to be honest. And I but I just don't think it's it'll happen. I just don't think he's capable. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. OK, so the contractor that Potts blames says he's not responsible for any of the messed up buses. He says he only supplied laborers who worked at Potts's warehouse under Potts's direction. And several customers say they're now stuck with unlivable buses. They don't even feel comfortable selling because of all the electrical hazards. Now, on the legal front, Potts has already lost one customer lawsuit to the tune of $26,000, and he's paid the judgment. Despite other cases being filed, Potts insists that he's one of the best schoolie builders out there, and on Friday afternoon started supplying our defenders with names of what he says are happy or satisfied customers. The defenders are currently confirming that information, and we'll let you know what they find out. Well, right now it is 940, about 71 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And coming up after the break, how a young woman overcame the obstacle of being a single mom to get her college degree and what she has planned for her future. I'm glad you're back. 944 on your Monday morning. A single mom graduating from Northwest Vista College here in San Antonio has refused to give up. After her daughter was born in 2009, she went to school but flunked out. Ten years later, she bravely came back, this time utilizing the support from Alamo Colleges. Sarah Cosa introduces us to today's college great grad who hopes her future includes law school and fighting for others in need. I feel like it's always when you hit rock bottom and you're really searching for depth and meaning and what it is that 
you know, you want to do. Northwest Vista College grad Danielle Barretta knows what rock bottom feels like. In 2009, she was juggling being a single new mom and going to school, but didn't know she had help and resources. So she flunked out. But she says it was her daughter who inspired her to get back up. She has been a catalyst in me bettering myself so that I could be in a good place to come and get an education and be successful. 10 years later, Danielle went back to school, this time utilizing the Northwest Vista's counseling department for support. She thrived and became her student government association president. She is now enrolled at UTSA to study politics and law. She hopes from there she can go to law school and be an attorney that advocates for others who don't have a voice. Everything she's doing is selfless and it's for everyone else. And it makes us really proud that, you know, she's a wildcat here. Seeing that development in her from when she started to where she is today, there is nothing that can stand in her way. She is such an adaptive leader and she's a transformational leader. Danielle's advice for those who hit rock bottom, don't worry, you are never alone. You just have to get back up. If you knock on one door and you don't get an answer, go knock on another one and just keep knocking until you get the answer that you're looking for. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's 946. Let's go ahead and check in with Justin. We're excited about this rain. Yeah, rain is a really good thing. We just don't necessarily want severe weather or flooding. And unfortunately, this time of year, they kind of all come together, right? Uh, hopefully that the rainfall totals will be decent tonight. We won't have a lot of issues. Want to start with the radar and the radar is going to be our best friend today, especially as we get into this evening. You'll be Seen a lot more action on our radar. We see some storms right now out over parts of Mexico in the Big Bend. That's sort of the initial push, initial area of energy coming in from the west. And this will spread further east as we get later into today. But right now, nothing here across San Antonio area. Maybe just a few very light showers around Del Rio this morning. I want to show you the aquifer real quick, too, because should we get some good rain, Hopefully that would push the numbers up here. We're at 644.5 today. The 10 day average is at 644. So we're still very much within stage two, which is once a week watering. If we could get a good rainfall, we've seen this before. It can push the aquifer up quite a bit. We'll see what happens. Uh, there are some indications we could see some widespread rain overnight tonight. Here's a look at the severe weather risk, and it's a fairly large area stretching from Carrizo Springs, San Antonio up to San Angelo and Lubbock and then back out west to the Fort Stockton area. And this is calling for scattered severe storms throughout the day. And now I think our risk here in San Antonio is really gonna come tonight. If you're further west, it may be a bit earlier, but hail and gusty winds are gonna be the main threats with any storms that develop. So here's the forecast, and we'll fast forward to 7 p.m. this evening. About a 40% chance of rain here in San Antonio with some spotty showers and storms developing out ahead of a main complex of storms that's going to gather some strength this evening. Del Rio, Rock Springs, maybe Lake Uvalde. This is a time frame where we do have to watch for severe weather and we'll get some pretty heavy rain, I think, out of this. This marches east by 11 p.m. or midnight. We're talking about a 60% chance of rain here in San Antonio as this works its way through. And then by 7 a.m., a lot of that is moving east and we get a little bit of a break. Now, showers and storms may redevelop Tuesday afternoon. This is around 5 o'clock. We'll put back in a 30% chance of rain. And then we're going to get another complex of showers and storms coming in late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. This, too, could bring severe weather and also some pretty heavy rain with it. So we have a couple of opportunities here to get rain before all of this moves out by Wednesday afternoon. This even shows some showers and storms still around for the morning commute on Wednesday. Storm threats, we kind of talked about this. Wind gusts are going to be our biggest threat. Hail and flooding will be there though too, and the tornado threat is low. As we look at the rainfall totals, potential rainfall totals, I'd say on average one to three inches. Now this is through Thursday morning, so this accounts for those two areas of storms that we think will come through. Uh, but on average, I think one to three is a pretty good bet. Some places could see a little bit more, some a little bit less. Either way, it should be fairly widespread, which is exactly what we're looking for. Outside right now, we've got mostly cloudy to cloudy skies, 70 degrees at the airport. East northeasterly winds at about nine miles per hour. And the cloud cover still sitting here around San Antonio. We've got a few breaks down towards Pleasanton, some breaks as you get down towards Carn City, and then a lot of cloud cover as you go west. I do think we'll see some breaks in the clouds today, enough to push temperatures up into the 80s. But right now we're sitting at 70. 69 hello to 68 Boulevard, 70 right now in New Braunfels. Here's our case at 12 hour forecast 79 noontime 
and then we should be in the 80s this afternoon. But rain chances start to kick in 30% chance 4 to 5 o'clock and then we go up to 50-60% chance by 8, 9 o'clock and temperatures in the 70s. East Julie winds anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour, but those winds will pick up as those storms close in. So the extended forecast will go 86 tomorrow, just a 30% chance of rain, but another 60% chance Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, 79 on Wednesday with some lingering showers and storms, and then it clears out Thursday, Friday, and Memorial Day weekend is looking dry and hot. Mid 90s by Saturday, guys. Back to the 90s. Yep. Thank you, Justin. 10 till 10, about 71 degrees. And coming up next, a look at the top movies at the weekend box office. Two new movies made the top five at the weekend box office. CNN's David Daniel lets us know if either of them are now the reigning champ. The psychological horror film Men debuted in fifth place with $3.3 million. 3.9 million gave Sonic the Hedgehog 2 fourth place and a domestic total of 181 million. The bad guys got away with $6.1 million for a third place finish. Apparently they're making the wrong sort of film. Downton Abbey, A New Era debuted in second place with $16 million. Three in a row for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. The mystical Marvel movie retained the box office crown with a weekend haul of $31.6 million, giving it a domestic total of $342 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And the Children's Hospital of San Antonio is hiring. They will be hosting an in-person job fair tomorrow. That's from 4 to 7 p.m. They are looking for full and part-time RNs, PRNs, and respiratory therapists. The career fair will be held in the administration conference room D inside of the Children's Hospital at 333 North Santa Rosa. Tomorrow is election day for the Texas primary runoffs. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. through 7 p.m. You can find a full list of polling locations on our website, as well as look at sample ballots to see before you head out to cast your vote. We'll have official election results online as soon as polls close and on air starting on the night beat tomorrow evening. And tomorrow on GMSA at 9, we are going to introduce you to a local teacher who was inspired by her kindergarten teacher. She is the educator of the month, and we're going to have her story tomorrow. And right now we're in the low 70s. We're expecting to be in the mid 80s today. About a 40% chance of some pop up afternoon stuff, mainly out to the west. And then as we go into tonight, then storms become more likely. And I think we're going to see a complex of showers and storms work the area tonight. Heavy rain, gusty winds, some hail possible. And then we'll see a break in the action tomorrow before we get more storms developing Tuesday afternoon and especially Tuesday night into Wednesday with some more heavy rain possible. So a couple of chances here to get some rain. Like we said, we want the rain. We don't want the severe weather or flooding. Hopefully it'll work out that way. Now, I remember one yeah. of the things you said this morning, Justin, was is it could it could get loud tonight. It yes. could get loud. Yes. Uh, and that's always, you know, kind of an alarming wake up call. Yes, sure it is. It is. Right, Careful thank you, on the morning commute. Yep. <laughs> See you back here tomorrow morning for the early show and GMSA at 9.